I have ever strived to be a man of my world, and in my career as bridge builder, architect, engineer, I've aimed for a reputation of reliability, honesty, integrity, and I don't think it's a boast to observe that I've achieved that. Thus, on the face of it, my request to the United States Commission's claim should have sailed through smoothly. Being an avowed Unionist and one who remained so throughout the war, filing for the recompense at the loss of my property at the hands of the U.S. military seemed a quite natural thing to do. You see, at the end of the war, the federal government realized that many residents of the southern states most empathetically did not support the idea of secession, much less the establishment of a confederacy and that we suffered the same financial loss as those who rebelled and we deserved restitution. Now, you may have noticed that I said residents and not citizens. I use the more general term residents because not all of us who remained loyal to the Union were considered citizens. Indeed, such was my case. See, a citizen has a voice, some manner of influence. I had no influence before the war or during, because I was a free-colored man and I did not have the right to vote. And moreover, when I moved my family from Columbus and Gerard and settled our home west of Noonan, where I built, owned, and operated Moore's Bridge on the road to Carrollton, I was circumscribed by the state of Georgia's political opinion considering the Negroes, which is that the Negro in Georgia had no civil, social, or political rights whatsoever. And though I purchased my freedom before the war, the act of manumission conferred no right but that of freedom of locomotion. But despite such conscriptions, I remained loyal to the Union, and I begged and talked for the Union cause. Secession didn't change my feelings any, though people often told me to hush. Said that people might kill me trying to speak out against the Confederacy. <laughs> I remained a Union man beginning to end as much as I dared to be. And any work I did that benefited the Confederacy, be it building obstructions on the Chattahoochee River, or building facilities for the Confederate Naval Iron Works, or, or even supplying lumber for the ship that I built, I did so because I was obliged to. I always resented it. And I rejoiced when our union was reformed. At least I had the satisfaction of procuring work at the Iron Works for my freeborn sons, eliminating their chance of being conscripted into Confederate forces. So, as to my claims at the properties lost at Moore's Bridge and in Gerard, across the river from Columbus. My claim involved seven mules, a wagon, harnesses, foodstuffs, 27,000 board feet of lumber. Commissioner's verdict? Claim denied. Because confiscated Confederate documents showed that I was paid for elm hubs and spokes supplied to the Columbus, Georgia Quartermaster's Office. Uh, and for harnesses and leather goods sold to a Confederate officer in Cuthbert, Georgia. Now, the $568.27 from those items got my claim denied. Not the $16,946.16 I got as contractor for the ironworks. <laughs> I guess the commissioner's office didn't understand how precarious a union man's survival was at that time, especially for a colored man. So be it. I continued to be loyal to the Union in my heart and I did the work obliged to me so that my family would persevere. And claim or not or no, I persevere in my attachment to our Union. And I say with sincerity, God bless the United States.